It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we're going to beer from Brewdog and it's a bottle of their Sun Made Stout. It's a rum and raisin imperial stout coming in at 10.2% ABV in a 330 milliliter bottle. There's the bottle cap. Let's get the beer out into a glass and see what we get. Nice bit of smoke on the bottle opening beer in the glass then. Gonna go rigorous with this pour. It's not developing too much of a head. Ooh, saying that. Now we have a wonderful head on the beer. Yeah, two, one to two finger tan coloured head, jet black beer in the glass, good levels of carbonation. Uh, what excites me about the beer straight away is the fact that it's retained its head, it's got great head retention and I love the look of that head, that beautiful tan coloured head on the beer. Good levels, I see, yeah, this, this slow moving carbonation, there's no light bleeding through this imperial stout whatsoever. Um, it looks fantastic, it really does. It looks like what I call a Scandinavian style imperial stout where they're just really thick and gloopy, it's like engine oil. The last couple of stouts I had from Brewdog, one was okay, one wasn't too good. So I'm hoping for redemption with this beer. Um, one was with Buxton, one was with, was with Fierce Beer, the collaborations they did. Um, they just weren't great. I'm gonna be. I'm always honest. I'm always honest with you guys. They weren't. They just weren't great. But this looks to be a completely different beer. It looks great. It, I can smell it from here. It smells really good. You get the rum and the raisin, the chocolate and the coffee and the caramel. Let's stick it to my nose then. Yeah. I don't even think I have to take a sip of this beer to tell you that this, this beer will probably be either an 8 and 9 or a 10 out of 10. I can just smell the quality of this beer. I can smell the body. Strangely enough, when you drink close to 6,000 different beers from around the world, you get this sixth sense. And that sixth sense is, is being able to, to smell the things that, that you're gonna taste, even mouthfeel. I can I can I can look. I say a sixth sense, it's not really a sixth sense because I can just see it's it's just a bit of experience. Um I can see by rocking the beer back and forth the the carbonation chasing the head of the glass. It looks gloopy, it looks thick, but the aroma is just tremendous. That is just they should have called this Christmas Imperial Stout, but rum and raisin is good enough. There's a lot of rum and a lot of raisin eaten at Christmas. Let's dive in. Cheers. Very quickly. Caramel, chocolate, coffee, caramel, lots of roasted malt. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> yes, Brewdog, yes, do it to me all the time, every single time I want you to do this to me, I want you to make me pull this face every time you brew a beer, this is fantastic, absolutely fantastic Stone the Crows, Stone the Crows brew dog. Yes! The thickness, the boldness, the, I'm nearly falling over here. Um, just how fantastically thick and gloopy and creamy. Oh, I can't use the word creamy. Can I, can I use the word creamy? Why not? Oh, that is just... I haven't been this excited for a Brewdog beer for nine years. 
eight, nine years. Uh, they're so inconsistent. They, they do my head in. They're so inconsistent. When they get it right, they get it bleedingly right. Like, 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 like razor sharp right. When they get it wrong, it's completely wrong. It's just, and that's growth. That's growth for you. They're still, even though they're a multinational brewery now with breweries in Australia and America and Scotland and Germany, they brew all over the world. I still think they, because they, they're growing so quickly, pardon me, I, I just think that they're just, they're teething. They're still they're like a baby, they're still teething. They, they, they're like a giant baby wallowing around teething. And and they get, not teething, wrong word, training wheels. It's like, it's like, it's like sometimes they still need the training wheels. Sometimes they disregard the training wheels. And I love it when Brewdog just throw the training wheels away. And they just concentrate on brewing something spectacular. This beer is spectacular. If you're a fan of craft beer, if you've you've probably heard of Brewdog, yeah, you're almost kind of bound to have heard of Brewdog by now. I, I would say probably a quarter of the world's drinking population, beer drinking population, maybe even half have tried a Brewdog Punk IPA. If you're a beer drinker, even if you drink a lager, you've probably tried. Brewdog's Punk IPA somewhere along the line. I'm just going to go back, take a take a, a breath, and and just explain to you why this beer is so good. This is one of the best Imperial Stouts I've ever, ever reviewed on the channel. This here, Imperial Stout, is better than Speedway Stout. <laughs> For me, this is a better beer than Speedway Stout by Alesmith. If you're new to craft beer, if I'm, if I'm slightly alienating you here with these comments, then I do apologize. Um, maybe Google Alesmith Speedway Stout. It's one of the best Imperial Stouts out there one of for me anyway i mean it's all it's all subjective it's all it's all whatever you think is a great beer at the time um i want to start off with the mouthfeel the mouthfeel really is like engine oil engine oil should i say it it's just just if you imagine you haven't changed the engine oil in your car for maybe i don't know i'm lazy i haven't changed my car's engine oil in in six years i just keep topping it up when it runs out i just keep topping the engine up but if you imagine just how thick and gloopy if i was to undo that bolt at the bottom of the sump and just let that oil just just run out of the the can it would be it would be like treacle and that's that's what this beer is for me it's treacle it's thick it's gloopy and and, and, and that's what it should be doing when you think of rum and raisin, you think rum and raisin chocolate? And rum and raisin chocolate, if you were to hold a piece of rum and raisin chocolate in your hand for a minute, it would be everywhere, all over your hand. It would be thick and it would be gloopy and it would be messy. And that's the thought process with the beer. The beer needs to follow that, that thickness, that gloopiness, that if you had a latte, a thick, latte from maybe one of the green plastic coffee shops that are all over the world um then then it would be thick and creamy and gloopy and if you think of chocolate as i just mentioned it would be thick and sticky and gloopy and the other big flavor is caramel um the sweet caramel again if you think sticky caramel it's gloopy and thick and the reason i mention them three flavors is because the roasted malt in the beer, when they brew the beer, typically, typically give off flavours of chocolate, 
coffee and caramel. But this has been brewed with rum and raisin. This is this does the <laughs> I'm like a Cheshire cat, I can feel it. I'm trying not to smile at this stage. Um this this has the chocolate, the coffee and the caramel and then it has that kind of extra layer of, of, of rum and raisin. It's it's like it's it's almost got the mouthfeel of a Bailey's, believe it or not. I love a Bailey's at Christmas, but believe it or not, this is almost, almost as thick and gloopy as a Bailey's and that's that's really saying something. That is really saying something. I can show you the, the, the gloopiness of the beer now. I can show you the mouthfeel of the beer just by rocking this beer around and just rolling around my glass. You can just see how viscous and, and, and velvety that beer looks. Look at the lacing on the glass. Look at the way the carbonations, it, it's like a half second delay by the time it chases the head of the glass. Um, there's a little bit of sweetness in the beer from the, from the malts. There's a lot of bitterness on the back end. Uh, there's caramel, there's vanilla. There's some vanilla flavors coming through. A touch of plum and fig and prune, but not too much. That would, that would indicate that there was a lot of hops in the beer. And, and there's a little bit of plum and fig and prune, but not too much. I think that's the best beer that Brewdog have ever brewed, ever. I, I've, I've reviewed um, the first, I was the first person, believe it or not, I was the first person to review Brewdog's Punk IPA on YouTube. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Going back all that way. And that beer, that beer was amazing. That beer, Back then, that 6%, not 5.4, that 6% ABV Punk IPA back then, hazy, just blew my mind. And I fell in love, I completely fell in love with Brewdog. And we've had this love-hate relationship ever since. Um, they went through a stage of, of um, and I don't want to dirty the beer review really. I don't think, I'm not sure if I want to, I will talk about it because because I'm as honest as the, the, the day I was born. Um, they went through a rough patch. They went through like this massive expansion of growth and the beer quality suffered um, for me quite a lot. Not just myself, but others were kind of saying that Brewdog, it almost had like, um, like a regional brewery taste to it. Do you know every every regional brewery from around the world, not just the UK. Let's use the, the UK as an example for the moment because that's where Brewdog started. Let's talk about another brewery, Marston's. Marston's had that kind of, the water was farty. That, and they love that. that they call it Burtonization. I think Burtonization should be banned. Um, it was almost the water was was sulfury and fatty and their beers, all of their beers for me, suffered. Some people, a lot of people love it. A lot of people love that kind of personalization, that, that fatty water, sulfury taste in Marston's beers. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. And then we have another brewery, a regional brewery, Shepherd Neem. Now, for, for some reason or other, Shepherd Neem's beers were, were tinny. They were, it was like having a few copper nails dropped in the bottom of your glass. And a lot of Shepherd Neem's beers, they suffered with that. They suffered with the, that copy, copper nail, tinny, awful taste. Um, I could go on, I won't go on, but you see where I'm going. Now, and then Bruder just had this, there was something about a Brewdog beer, from a 5am Saint to a Punk IPA, to a Jackhammer, the later Jackhammer, not the one I reviewed, the later Jackhammer, um, 
they all seem to have this kind of underlying brew doggy type taste that that I just couldn't stand. I just couldn't stand it. I just couldn't. Um, it was like they were using some kind of ingredient in in every brew, whether it was a some kind of liquid hop or whether it was some kind of lupulin oil or or maybe it was the water I struggled and I was very vocal about it here on YouTube I was almost I was massively vocal about about my falling out of love with Brewdog it was like it was like it was like a terrible divorce but if they carry on brewing beers like this, I'm going to end the review now. If they carry on brewing beers like this, it's like falling in love with your your first wife all over again and, and remarrying and and finding that finding that spark, finding that love. <laughs> and I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. Not the first wife, but falling back in love with Brewdog. Rated. You can probably guess by now this is a Stone the Crows 10 out of 10. It feels like it's 9 o'clock and I started the beer review at quarter to 8. It feels like 9 o'clock at night now. It feels like I've been talking to her forever. Stone the Crows 10 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Put your comments in the comments box. Please subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.